These were companies that once were united, they spun apart. Mm -hmm. Why are they getting married again? Because everyone loves tobacco and drugs. Um, no, they're getting married again because, look, this is, this is an industry that we've seen a lot of. In fact, this type of consolidation recently. So, obviously, we had Laurel Ard Reynolds a few years ago, and then we had uh, British American Tobacco buying a piece of Reynolds that it didn't currently own. So these companies are getting back together and they're doing it for a number of reasons. Look, scale obviously counts in a declining industry like tobacco uh, and, and so that's been one of the, the drivers. The other, and this is sort of more forward looking, is you have all of these new opportunities, whether it's e-cigarettes, whether as you alluded to it's cannabis, which um, Altria already has a big stake in Kronos. Um, and, and actually like the, the big tobacco companies are the ones who are best positioned to really go and leverage those markets and try and make the right bets because you need a lot of firepower to do it. So there is a logic to getting together and look, these two companies also have very, very diverse and distinctive portfolios. One is almost entirely U.S. and one is entirely non-U.S. So putting them together, there is strategic rationale there. We were just looking at the share prices. Philip Morris down, down more than 7%. Why? Yeah, and down like what I was just looking at, it's down nearly 20% on the month. I think investors are looking at this and they're, they're sort of slightly confused, like why are they why would they want to go and do this? Why would they want to go back into the US, which is such a difficult market, both from a regulatory point of view and just the customer base is obviously declining. Um, and, and there is also potentially a concern there that you know, they're going to overpay, although if you look at it, it's a, it's a nil premium deal. We've talked about this. It was 58, 42 uh, in favor of Philip Morris. I should apologize. I went on there this morning and got that number the wrong way around. 58% control. It'll be 58% control by Philip Morris, 42 by Altria, uh, which gets you, if you look at the exchange rate, you get sort of 0.6 Philip Morris shares roughly for every uh, Altria share you own. Um, but it's, look, I think the Phyllis, Philip Morris shareholders are looking at this and saying, is this really something we want to see this company do? One important factor, and I think this is worth raising, is the top four holders of both companies are identical. The four big index funds own the, the top four positions in both these companies. So they're going to vote whatever ISS and Glass Lewis tell them to do. So it's going to come down to that. If those two um, shareholder advisory services think this is a good merger, then it will go through. So what are we going to find out what they think? They're going to take a long, hard look at it. We won't find out anything in the near term. Um, they will look at it on its merits and say what they think is in the best interest of all shareholders. It, it's also possible you could see some shareholders, the likes of Wellington or T. Rowe Price, both of whom are in these stocks, or indeed an activist, come in and make some fuss and say, well, you know, you could get a better price here. There's a better deal to be done. The issue with that is it's very hard to see anyone else coming in and making an offer Altria. There isn't another obvious buyer. So it would either be a, they, the case is either it's standalone or you do this merger. There's not another option. The regulators going to be okay with it? Uh, you would never bet against the FDA making a fuss. There's no obvious antitrust. As I said, one is US, one isn't US. So there's not the overlap there. But the FDA, you know, they may take a dim view of just the increased heft. They may say, like, it does, it's not good to have a bigger player because it makes it harder for us to go up against them when we're trying to impose tobacco regulations.